That looks so awesome. I love the architecture. And we're doing the Hiroshima style. We made it to the most iconic landmark in the city. It was so rich and creamy. Konnichiwa from Hiroshima, Japan. Hello. We made it. This is our very first time in Japan and we're so excited. We just have our coffee here in our rooms today. We did this 7-Eleven filtered drip coffee. You know, there's not a lot of English spoken. It's mostly yeah. Japanese. We don't speak very much Japanese. You know, we're learning as we go, though we decided to just go with a less stressful filtered coffee today and then go and see the city. We're excited to explore. And now after some caffeine, we could start the day. And this being both of our first times in this city, we excitedly head over to one of the most iconic sites in Hiroshima. The cars, dude, I love these little delivery trucks. And then in general, the car culture here is they don't have any of these unreasonably big cars yet, or maybe not any, but very few of them, like the big SUVs. But instead, they have a lot of these little K cars, one going by there, these tiny minivans. That's a full-size bus there. Everything's a little smaller and it makes so much sense, man. And then these old school taxis like this one. I like that too a lot. They're everywhere, very uniform. Very nice to see that, that there's still countries in the world where that works. After a travel day, we needed a little more extra fuel today. So we head to this underground cafe for another coffee. He's walking backwards. <laughs> the menu was entirely in Japanese. We were not getting service on our phones underground and English wasn't really an option. So I ended up panic ordering a coffee with a tiny side of milk and an entire breakfast meal. <laughs> while Phil ordered an interesting variation of a cappuccino. Honestly, the vibe in this place was quiet and chill, and it felt like a place where a lot of locals enjoyed the newspaper and their morning beverages. First breakfast was here. And now with more fuel and food in our systems, we head over to the famous Hiroshima castle. Got a big moat. So we're going to Hiroshima castle, which is one of the big tourist sites. Has a nice moat. I like a castle with a good moat around it, protecting from the enemies. Yeah, we're gonna go get a ticket and hopefully go up there. Hopefully it's not too long of a line. I heard it can be. Again, like any good castle, it has a whole castle area surrounding it. This is a big park here, very well maintained, very beautiful. This one is actually free to just walk into. Yeah. So I guess the tickets are probably at the castle and just for the castle. Hiroshima Castle was originally built at the end of the 16th century. Wow, it looks epic. I like the colors. It was strategically built here due to the access of convenient land and water transportation. And this is the first time we see this type of architecture here in Japan. Uh, the first castle we're visiting and it gives me hot blue eye samurai vibes. We just finished that show right before we came. One of the best shows, one of my favorites of all time. And now actually going to one of these castles is pretty awesome. This castle has been through quite a bit of politics and destruction throughout the centuries, but still held strong up until the atomic bomb in World War II destroyed a majority of the buildings and surroundings. What show are you thinking of? Blue-eyed samurai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just said that too. The main tower of the castle has been since reconstructed to its former appearance. The inside of Hiroshima Castle now holds a multi-level museum with historic items and weapons. That is not what I thought the inside of this castle looks like. All right, first floor in this castle is a whole museum floor. This also reminds me of Blue-Eyed Samurai, the end of the Edo period. See, you do learn history in anime. There you go, there you go. There's even a section where you can try on samurai armor. Samurai versus townsfolk lifestyle. All right, so apparently if you were a samurai, you were a little bougie. They got way bigger villas with tatami floors like this. Very nice, whereas the town folk lived in way more cramped and crappier conditions. So always a good time to be a samurai. Walking through this museum was very interesting and interactive. How does it feel? It is uh, fairly heavy in the front. Interesting. It's of course dull. Oh yeah. Look at this helmet though. That's awesome. Oh, this is the best helmet. That's epic looking. If we had to pick an animal crest on the top of our helmets, it would be a manatee. 100% manatee. It was fascinating to get a glimpse of how life and culture was back then. Um, I'm not really sure that I would fit in there, but I could try. <laughs> I'm not sure I would fit. And the top floor is a great elevated 360 view of the city. Yeah, we reached the viewing platform. Wow. I had no idea this whole castle is kind of like samurai themed. So you see all the armor and the uh, 
katanas they had and uh, talks a lot about the defenses and stuff of the castle so well, better than I expected. Definitely worth a visit. This was absolutely worth it, just for these views alone. Up here, we had great visual of the city and surroundings, which was probably perfect to spot any approaching enemies. Today, the castle grounds are now enjoyed by people enjoying a meal or a leisurely stroll in the gardens. Look at the moat, that's a big moat. Are... Yeah, that looks amazing with the mountains. You know the movie The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise? No, I've never seen it. Really? Do you know it's like loosely based on my life? Isn't he older than you? No. He's 16. I'm 21. On the castle grounds, there's also a shrine, along with ruins and several other buildings and layers of defense. So we're still in the castle complex. These are probably the defense lines right at the moat. Um, that looks so awesome. I love the architecture. I really like the wood. She likes the hardwood. We all knew about that though, right? <laughs> and we're leaving you know, with this nice little wooden bridge. Those castle complexes there, they're just awesome. Like being from Europe, you're used to a lot of castles. They're just very different, you know? Yeah. I think they're a little older. They're all made of stone and they have this like typical castle style, right? But here, it's a very different style of castle. And you could say it's a little more, what do you say? It's a little fancier, nice. Yeah, I think it's just because you're not used to it, but I really like them too. The palaces, the castles here. Well, where would you rather live in like a medieval European castle or in a nice Edo period Japanese castle? Let us know. <laughs> I choose the Edo one. It's a Japanese one. I choose heating and air conditioning. <laughs> At this point, we have built up our appetites for some yummy regional Japanese food, and we head back into the city for the specific dish. So we've built up an appetite, and we're going to go eat something iconic. It originated from here. It's probably the most famous dish here in Hiroshima, and uh, let's go. I'm very excited. It's actually one of my favorite Japanese dishes. I can all of a sudden smell food strongly. I don't know if it's coming from where we're going, but we are going right there. Okonomimura, which is this plaza. We are here for Okonomiyaki Hiroshima style. This iconic dish is a Japanese teppanyaki savory pancake. We are in Okonomimura, which is a multi-story food hall with multiple booths all serving Okonomiyaki. Half of them were already full, so we just picked one that looked good and sat down. The ingredients in the Hiroshima style of okonomiyaki are layered rather than mixed and usually consist of batter, cabbage, pork, and yakisoba. There are options with different seafood, mung bean sprouts, eggs, or other toppings as well, but the amount of cabbage in this style is typically much more than the Osaka style of okonomiyaki. All right, so we made it and we're getting okonomiyaki, which is an iconic Japanese savory pancake. And we're doing the Hiroshima style, which originated here in Hiroshima. It was like a cheap way of having all your ingredients together for a nice meal. So the difference between Osaka and Hiroshima style is this one is layered. So we have the layers here. He built it up starting with the batter. It's a thin batter. Then you have the yakisoba, which is the traditional way of ordering it. And then we have eggs. We got one with pork, squid, and a ton of green onions. As you can see, there are plenty. And it's made on this tapanyaki grill, and it's made right in front of us. And there's a whole bunch of them here. We're just gonna give this one a try. Yeah, cut it up. So the yakisoba is the noodle type that is on there. Fried noodles and is what And you can choose between to. yakisoba and udon. I really like the udon, however, this is the traditional way. And we added a healthy amount of mayonnaise on top, you know. Because that's how we do it. Oh. There we go. There we go. I'm excited to give this a try. This is one of my favorite things. I love pancakes in all forms. Let's go for the savory one. Mm. What I love about this is that it's cooked fresh and you get to see all of the ingredients placed and cooked right in front of you. And when it's served, it's piping hot. Be careful. Yeah, it's very hot. <laughs> Nice, happy fried meal. Mm. So that's a pretty big portion for one dish. I think it's totally shareable. It's so hot, it's steaming hot. There's also bacon in there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. 
they describe it as a pancake, right? It's a pancake because of the base thing. But I have to say it's not really a pancake. It's a noodle dish, in my opinion, at least how they make it here. Very saucy, has a lot of ingredients on there, spring onion. Egg always goes nice with noodle. It's really good. It's really hearty. Look at the bottom. This is the bottom, the pancake part. And there's a ton of cabbage. I don't know if I mentioned that. That's like the primary ingredient. Man, way better than the one I had before in Germany. So I wasn't a big fan. Now I'm definitely a bigger fan. This is awesome. This was so satisfying. Okonomi means as you like it, and yaki translates to grilled. And there are so many variations and toppings to add to this dish. Fried oysters is another popular choice in this area. Phil and I split one order for 1200 yen, which is currently under 8 US dollars, and it was plenty of food, especially if we wanted to see more of the city and try more food later. So full, we gotta go walk it off now. Yeah, let's see what else the city has to offer. So first impression of the city is absolutely great, especially now today that the sun is out. It always makes such a big difference. Yeah. But we're traveling around Japan for the next couple of weeks and we're trying to make as many videos as we can and each week on a Friday one will come out. So if you like Japan, if you like food culture and traveling, maybe consider subscribing and sticking around. Arigato gozaimasu! If you want to further support us, you can do that on patreon.com slash dnnphil where we make additional monthly videos for certain tiers. And a big thank you to our soulmate level patrons, Laura and Jared, Roger Lupka, Robin and Parker Dopki. Thank you! All right, so we made it to the most iconic landmark in the city. It's the atom bomb dome. Hiroshima is known for being bombed during World War II or at the end of World War II. And that's how it's kind of been known for a while. And this is one of the landmarks here. It's the only building that's still left standing after the bomb was dropped. A lot of the other buildings were destroyed and they thought about actually tearing this one down, but they left it standing here as kind of like a peace and remembrance of what happened. This whole area is like a peace park. There is a peace flame and there's a lot of other statues museums that Phil and I walked through yesterday when it was gray and rainy. <laughs> Today is much nicer. It's also Friday and it's way busier as you can see, but I'm glad it's still left standing. I think it's a good remembrance here. It actually looks fairly tasteful. It looks pretty nice. It's a right integrated into the city center, yeah. right on the river here and next to it on that side is the park. Very good spot to visit and I think it's one of, it's probably the main reason for most of the tourists that come here to, yeah. to look at it. Definitely. By the way, these old school taxis are everywhere and I can't tell if those are new cars built for that or that's old ones, but they're very common and I like the style. Reminds me a lot of like the 90s, 80s, something like that. So this right here is this Peace Memorial Park that is right attached to the uh, A-bomb dome, both directions. It's very spacious. There's a ton of tour groups just going around. There's a memorial for the victims. There's just a lot of statues. The interesting feeling that I've gotten here as a German, I'm kind of used to going to memorials for World War II, a lot of them for the genocide and the Holocaust, all that stuff that went down. And it's weird to come to a country on the other side of the world World and finding memorials that are kind of similar so it gives me a little bit of that feeling and I didn't expect that to be honest. Very interesting um, to see that here. It's just literally half around the world. The Peace Park is pretty central in the city and we found ourselves walking through this area a few times during our stay. We really enjoyed the edge of the park near the water. There are benches to enjoy your lunch and bird watch, but also we lucked out and it was the beginning of Sakura season and a few cherry blossoms were already in bloom. So we're here at the river right at the core in Hiroshima and um, I think Hiroshima has the same issue that a lot of German um, cities have while well, this heron flies by and that is being pretty much fully destroyed during World War II. They had to rebuild the city in the 50s, 60s and obviously they were occupied by the Allied forces and then had to rebuild cheaply, right? And that's what usually, when usually it happens that they built a lot of these blocky buildings that are known to be pretty ugly architecture nowadays and uh, that's a little bit the, the face of Hiroshima as well and you see that in a lot of German cities. We have a lot of these buildings as well and they're not the prettiest but um, over time it gets better obviously you start rebuilding them after a couple of decades but yeah the city there's a lot of these buildings that also is a familiar site like uh, in german cities as well interesting speaking of similarities to germany japan does get a decent amount of rain and during this trip we got to experience it so for dinner we decided to warm up and try this highly rated ramen shop where we ordered at a vending machine what are you doing that only accepted cash and after we ordered and paid, we had to give our ticket to the server. Oh, 
was steaming. This place was very cozy and full of small groups or single diners enjoying some soup. First ramen in Japan. Looks pretty good. Yellow noodles, nice eggs, nice pork. We both ordered ramen and I decided to add an egg to mine and Phil added a side of karaage to his. Each ramen bowl ended up being around 1100 yen, which is around 7 US dollars. It was so rich and creamy and the perfect meal to end a rainy day in Hiroshima. Xiao da. Small, big flush. Also the bidet. Nice. 